Mr. President. Senator from Connecticut. Thank you, Mr. President. On July 20th, just a few days ago, we had a pretty somber anniversary in this country, Senator. Uh, Bennett came down to acknowledge the occasion. It was the one-year anniversary of the shooting in Aurora, Colorado, uh, in which a young man killed 12 individuals and wounded 58 others uh, when he walked into a crowded movie theater at a midnight showing of The Dark Knight Rises. And once again, show the vulnerability of this nation when the United States Congress refuses to act on the issue of preventing gun violence. Mr. President, um, I've come down here virtually every week, not frankly as often or as regularly as Senator Whitehouse has on the issue of climate change. Um, but in the short time that I've been in the Senate, I've tried to come down to the floor virtually every week to talk about the victims of gun violence. Today, it's an apt moment to recognize the victims in Aurora who have now been lost for over a year. But this number here represents something different. On December 14th, our world in Connecticut was just absolutely shattered uh, by a global tragedy in which 26 and 7-year-olds died in a splatter of gunfire at Sandy Hook Elementary School, as well as six of the professionals that were charged with protecting them. Um, and what has happened since December 14th is frankly, in a lot of ways, even more egregious, even more unconscionable, even more difficult to swallow than what happened on that day. And that is that 6,497 people have died from guns since December 14th. In frankly every manner, there have been more mass shootings, there have been accidental deaths, there have been suicides, there have been incidences of one-on-one -on -one urban violence, of suburban violence, family-on-family -family violence. And what has happened is that, you know, this country has just kind of become numb <laughs> to it. We just kind of accept that every day you're going to be able to pick up the paper and somewhere across this country there's going to be upwards of 30 or 40 people who have died at the hands of guns at a rate that you can't find anywhere else in the civilized world. We just kind of accept it here. And so the number is startling. Since December 14th, almost 6,500 people have died through gun violence. But we can't just settle on that number. We've got to talk about who these people are. And so, Mr. President, um, I'm trying to lend some voice to the victims of gun violence every week on the floor of the Senate to try to spur this place to action, because I guess I've become resolved that the numbers aren't enough, that apparently this number isn't big enough for the Senate to do something, so that maybe if we humanize these tragedies, that that might do the trick. A.J. Boyk was described as a ball of joy by his friend Jordan. He had just graduated from high school and he was looking forward to attending the Rocky Mountain College of Art and Design in the fall. He really wanted to be an art teacher. He wanted to teach others the joy that he felt for art. He was known as a big personality, so much so that after he was killed in that movie theater in Aurora, over a thousand people came to his funeral, and among those mourners were his girlfriend, who was there in the theater the day that he was shot. Matthew McQuinn was one of the heroes that day. He was there with his girlfriend, Samantha, and her brother, Nick, when the shooter came into the theater and started spraying bullets. Matthew as well as Nick attempted to shield Samantha from the bullets. Samantha survived, but Matthew did not. He was working in a Target. That's actually where he met his girlfriend when they were working at another Target. And um, he was remembered by his coworkers uh, very fondly. 
He died that day saving a life, as did Navy Petty Officer Third Class John Thomas Larimer. He was one of two active duty service members who died as a result of that mass shooting. His girlfriend, whose life he saved, said this, John and I were seated in the middle area. When the violence occurred, John immediately and instinctively covered me and brought me to the ground in order to protect me from danger. In that act, he saved his girlfriend, but he was struck with a bullet that ended his life. Alex Sullivan was 27 years old, and his friends called him a gentle giant. He was ringing in his 27th birthday, in fact, by going to the premiere of The Dark Knight Rises. His family said that he always had a glowing smile on his face, and he made friends with everybody. He was a huge movie buff. He was a comic book geek, as his family called him, and he loved the New York Mets. Sunday following his attack would have been his one-year wedding anniversary. Michaela Medic was called Kayla by her friends. She loved her friends. She loved going out with her friends. That's what she was doing when she went out that evening to see this movie. Her family didn't find out that she had been killed that day until 20 hours after the shooting. They had spent that evening and morning driving from hospital to hospital, hoping to get news that she had survived. Veronica Mosier Sullivan was the youngest of the 12 people that were shot. She was six years old, not unlike the 20 six and seven year olds who were killed in Newtown. She was described as beautiful and innocent, excited about life, she was there that evening because her family wanted to get her mind off of the recent passing of her grandfather. She had become consumed with sorrow over the passing of her grandfather. So as a treat, her family brought her to the premiere of this movie. She was going to start swimming lessons the following week. Mr. President, James Holmes walked into that movie theater with an AR-15 style rifle, which we have heard talked about over and over and over again, the weapon of choice in mass shootings in this country. But just as important, he was armed with 100 round drums of ammunition. Why on earth does this Senate allow for the continued legal sale of 100 round drums of ammunition. What possible legal reason could there be for the possession of 100 round drums of ammunition that go into an automatic weapon other than to kill as many people as possible as quickly as possible? There is no reason that a hunter or a sport shooter needs a hundred round drum of ammunition. And yet we can't even get the votes to ban the sale of those deadly accessories to semi-automatic weapons. I get it, 6,497 people didn't die at the hands of a assault weapon, didn't die at the hands of a hundred round drum, never mind a 30 round magazine. But these mass shootings are going to continue to happen. Frankly, the one that happened in Santa Monica not long ago barely moved the headlines in this country. Three or four people dying is nothing these days at the hands of a semi-automatic weapon. You now have to have 20 or 30 people die in order for it to be a big story. Expectations have changed because these shootings are becoming regular, normal occurrences. And we can't let this country become numb to mass shootings in the way that I would argue we've become numb to the 6,500 people who have died since December 14th. And so, Mr. President, I, I understand that, that we tried and failed to get 
legislation passed through this Senate that, of course, is supported by 90 percent of Americans that would just extend background checks to more sales of weapons to make sure the criminals don't have weapons to make gun trafficking a crime in a way that it is not to provide some more mental health resources. But we shouldn't give up. We shouldn't give up because there is going to be another Aurora. There will be another Sandy Hook if we do nothing. 30 to 40 people will still die every day if we stand by and continue to allow this kind of regular, everyday gun violence to be the background noise of this nation. And maybe if the numbers don't move people, the stories of the victims will. Maybe that will be enough to finally prompt the United States Senate and the House of Representatives to action. I yield the floor.